Welcome to Intero Bites. These are 15 minute videos taken from my long form live streams. If you want to see the full video or more, subscribe to Dawn DeQuisto and check out the playlists on my main page. Thanks for being here. Enjoy. All right, Mr. Latasa, I appreciate you coming in and talking with me here. Um, like I said, uh, we're, we're still in the preliminary stages of this investigation. Yeah. Uh, your name did come up of course. Uh, because you were associated at some point with Wendy, of course. which is his ex-wife, as I'm sure yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, so I'm basically just, I appreciate you coming in. Sure. Um, I want to ask you some questions, kind of figure out where you were, if you've heard anything, if you have any information that would be helpful to us, yeah. um, just we'll kind of run that whole gamut. Um, okay, so I just want a question before you get started. Is this, I'm sorry, is, is this on the record as I give you this? Yes, statement? Yeah, it's on the record. Is there any opportunity to talk off the record? Or that's not possible. No, it's possible. Okay, we do on the record first, and then I have a couple theoretical things that sure. I want to be quoted on. But back yeah. up. okay. The, is that Windrush Village? It is. Apartment 41. Mm -hmm. How do you like the neighborhood over there? It's cheap. <laughs> it's 500 bucks a week. I'm saying for a house. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. I used to live right over there off of Claremont. Yeah, sure, which sure. Is right there across the road. Uh -huh. That's right. That's totally well, like you said, it's kind, of, it's kind of cheap over there. Yeah. That's where I first moved when I got out of college. But gotcha. anyway, that's neither here nor there. Uh, do you have any contact numbers that I can reach you at? Should sure. I need to talk to you later? Sure. I think I talked to you on a 294 number. That's the number. That's the only number I have. That's your number. Yeah. Okay. I got that one. Um, just tell me a little bit about yourself as far as your background and sure, stuff like sure, that. Sure. And kind of what you and Wendy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I actually got my PhD here at Florida State for 2000, 2008. Okay. Graduated from FSU. Went to Arizona for five years. This is my first year back. So I met Wendy maybe a month after I got back. Met her in September of 2013. Okay. We were uh, set up on a date by a mutual friend I work with. Hi, lady. Oh, you have someone mentioned. She was in here when Wendy did her long nine hour day. So Jeffrey is already aware that Jane was with Wendy at Wendy's long interview uh, a couple days earlier. And he also mentions that he was he was uh uh aware of that. Sorry, I'm I'm distracted. <laughs> And welcome, everyone. Welcome, everyone. Yes. So that would be our mutual friend, Jane, who introduced Wendy to Jeffrey, who's, who's, who brought up Jeffrey's name, actually. Jane actually brought up Jeffrey's name at Wendy's interview, interestingly. Okay. And I, I take it you've talked to somebody about that because you know about it? I, I, talked to Jane, I talked to Jane for five minutes. I've been out of town. Okay. Um, and Wendy and I are estranged at the moment, so it's pretty bad timing in terms of that. Um, so I'll say that as I give you the tail end of it. Sure. Um, so we started dating in September, did it all through the fall. Um, okay. Wasn't serious back then. She was dating other people as well. Um, came back from Christmas break, had a conversation, decided to date more seriously. And by March 1, we're, we're, we're a couple, we're girlfriend, boyfriend. By uh, March of 2014? Yeah, yeah. And then... Uh, Spent a lot. Of, <laughs> spent a lot of time with Wendy. I don't think anybody's been with Wendy more than me in the last six months. Um, okay. Um, you know, she has two kids. I've been over there. I'd say eighty or ninety percent of nights I'm over there. And every single night that she doesn't have the kids, with maybe just one or two exceptions, if she's in town, I've slept over. Um, so I spent a lot of time with her. And we had some problems. Where's that? At? So. I just want to be clear about something here that Jeffrey wants to be clear about. He's making it known how much time he has spent with, with Wendy. It's important for him. Um, interestingly, he's not distancing himself from her. Just, I thought that was a really interesting point, but he's, he's been very um, open about how close they were. Uh, that's 3303 Aqua Ridge Way in Corn. 
Always at our house, never at mine. I got a shitty apartment. <laughs> Hi, Judy. We ran into some problems in May and June. Started fighting. And I'm not here to get into your personal life. Yeah, but I think it's okay. I mean, Bear, go ahead. Yeah. But given the, the severity of this incident, yes. I mean, I am going to pry a little bit. I hope you pry don't get much offended by that. Much, no, not so again, that's why I made that point, okay? He, he's allowing them to pry. He's very open. Um, met, we've seen many inter interrogations, if you're into this kind of thing like I am, where... Uh, somebody might come in, like if it were me and this happened with my ex or my, oh, just got put on hold Monday boyfriend, I'd be like, yeah, we, we're not, we're done. Yeah, it was a rocky relationship. I spent a lot of time with her, but it was never really good, right? I would, that's called distancing yourself. But no, he's embracing that he was tight with Wendy for, you might want to guess why he's doing that. Offended. Um Ultimately, I mean, what we're our goal is to is to find out who did this I and know. bring them to justice. Oh, I, I get it. I you get know, it. So, um, so anything you need to ask, ask that helps me because I don't want to volunteer or my BS. If, I, if it's not useful to you, so tell me what's useful to you. If anything you want. To yeah, and, and with that, I'll just um, just tell me everything, and I'll write down what's useful and discard okay. the rest. Okay. Um, um, so, what kind of problems were you getting into in May and June? Was it? Yeah. Um, geez, that's gonna be my life. This is fucked up. Um, Wait, what was that? I said, this, I said, if this goes public, it's just, I know how this works. Um, uh, um, it, it probably won't. Okay. Um, what was that about? I was just, same thing. I was I was just trying to say, look, I just forgive him, forget him. Both of us will move on here, you know? But she wanted me to uh, just roll over and it's a lot too stubborn. I didn't trust her. Anymore. Hey, Harley D. And I just want to pause and bring out the emphasis here that he he's already aware that this is possibly going to go public that's interesting isn't it that's some foresight he must have had a lot of time to think right think this through maybe even talk to a lawyer um on, which i would uh <laughs> definitely do that's not a criticism in any way um but it's just kind of interesting that he's already talking about how this is going to go public this is like we're in five minutes only here Um, maybe with the kids, like a co-parent, basically, it was really uh, rough. How old are the kids? Three and four. Better Lincoln. And also, I just want to point this out for what it's worth. He refers to himself as a co-parent with Wendy. Dan is their father. He lives in town and they have, uh, he has them half of the time. So I find this very interesting. Why do you think that is? Um, so the next night, and by the way, while she's in South Florida, she is completely miserable. She gets depressed, she gets anxious, and she's got her baggage. But I never, even though we didn't have much contact, I never heard her as bad as she was this trip to South Florida. I mean, this blew up her world. And how do you know she was in a bad place? Just because when we talked, it was, she was just... So she did call you like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 14 days, I got three phone calls. When did you contact Jane? Uh, contacted Jane on Saturday when I was emailed uh, that Danny had been shot. Uh, and I called Jane and I said, hey, I don't know if I should contact Wendy or not. It seems like this is way more important than a stupid no contact email. And she said, yeah, just email, just text her. And I sent her just a nice text saying, you know, I care a lot about you and the kids. If you need anything, I know we're in strange ways, but if you need anything, you please let me know. I'm always here. Okay, so he's, re again, if you can't hear, if you're not familiar with this, this is kind of important. Um, he is saying that the no contact email on Monday was stupid. Um, and he's also pointing out that this trip to Florida for Wendy was particularly stressful for her. Hey, everyone. Hey, Judy. Thanks for being here. I agree. Go Georgia. I think co-parenting is pretty presumptive and um, we're going to get more into some of the other things. I don't know if you caught in this interrogate. There's a lot in here uh, that we might have forgotten about. So it's interesting. She didn't even text back. When was that? That was Saturday. Hi, Carol. 
Well, I mean, she's got a lot on her mind right now. She does, but the thing was, she's texting with Jane. She's calling up with mutual friends. She's in touch with lots of other people. Oh, okay. So, yeah. um, and this may be too messy for her. I'm, yeah. But, but yeah. I, I'm not trying to overlook her. Yeah. I wouldn't take that personal no, I'm not. at this point. No, I'm not. Uh, I know she's in a mess. Um, I sent her a book for her little kids about bereavement um, from Amazon, and that would be the last contract I have. Um, right, you sent a text on Saturday to her? So again, he's saying that she's he's aware through Jane that and probably other friends that Wendy is talking to all of her friends, but not him. And he's being a gentleman about it. He's like, Yeah, I'm not this focus, but that must have really hurt. I mean, that must have been super hard to have this happen. And if he cared about her to know that she was in the middle of this. But and then have gotten the no contact order and then just be shut out like this after he's a co parent, so it's an interesting perspective. Yep, and then I'm on the phone with Jane five minutes later, and Jane's like, Oh, I'm getting text from Wendy, so I know she was around, you know, and her phone was working. Yeah, okay. Um, so that's the do you know if she's dating anyone else? I'm gonna have to speculate a little bit. Okay, that's um, fine. Like I said, we're investigating any and all leads. So if you're looking for a potential love triangle, that's the issue. Like, you know, someone that would. We're still, I mean, yeah. we're still trying yeah. to figure all this out. Yeah. Um, it's weird because I don't want to sound just like the jealous boyfriend. You know what I mean? It's, 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 we're it's taking all that into consideration, yeah. okay. too. Not, and I mean. Okay. There's going to be a lot of men that are uh, enamored of Wendy that are. Uh, really into Wendy and feel protective over Wendy and there's a few of them. Now, I don't know which of these guys she's going to say, oh, that's just a friend and that's true. I don't know. But I'm, you know, skeptical. Let, let me ask you this. Yeah. You, you say she can kind of uh, put men under her spell. Absolutely. It's it's for it. lack of a better term. No, it's true. It's true. Um, I was caught. Yeah. Who, who's the guy that is like totally that guy just out of sorts, not himself, but do anything for her. See, I don't think it's. Do you think there's anybody like that out there? Well, I wonder. You guys would have access to, to find out that I've always suspected there's a guy in South Florida because not getting my phone calls returned on this kind of stuff. And she goes to South Florida a lot. Okay. Um, and there's a weird pattern of behavior. And so my suspicion has always been. There was a guy in South Florida. Um, I wouldn't know who that was. So he's he's giving the detective here, and this is not Detective Isom. It's the other uh, other one whose name I forgot. I do apologize. Um, some ideas. He's saying, look, you know, she had a weird pattern of behavior when she went down to Florida, and she, he's going to get into this a little bit more in the, in the near future. Um, and in future uh, in, uh, interviews, and he's saying he suspected she had a guy down in South Florida as well, and maybe that might be somebody you want to look at. Officer Hale, thank you. That's right. Thank you. All right. Um, can you tell me where you were, like, up to and immediately after sure. Friday? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Thursday night. I was very upset about all this, and I was going to Tennessee on Friday or Saturday. I had big plans. I called my friends, but I'm really upset. I said, get in your car and drive. So Thursday at 7-ish, I just started driving north on 319 to get to 75. I drove by halfway to Tennessee, stayed in a suburb of Atlanta Thursday night. Friday, I drove to Tennessee, Harrogate, Tennessee. Um, <coughs> and I just got back. 